Welcome back to the 2017 Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship here in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, the top eight Dragon Duelists have been decided, and we have a very interesting deck in the top eight that we are about to feature in this upcoming feature match. We have Canada's Ryan Yu using a Chain Burn deck featuring perhaps one of the most exciting monsters in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! training card game, Dice Jar. Dice Jar is an incredibly dangerous gamble. It is indeed. For those who don't know, both duelists roll a die and deal damage based on the roll. But if one of them rolls a 6 and the other does not, the one who rolled a 6 inflicts 6,000 points of damage to the opponent. It's even more dangerous than that because the only the player who wins the roll gets to deal the damage. That's right. So rolling a 6 is huge, mm -hmm. a huge advantage. Uh, his opponent is uh, Connor Dwyer, who is using a... It's fairly standard uh, True Draco deck. Yes. Uh, far less exciting, but far probably far more consistent. Yeah, it's a lot safer. You actually get plenty of draw cards. And um, one of the things that stood out to me with Ryan Yu's deck is that he wasn't using the things that you think about when you think about burn, like Accumulated Fortune, for example, or uh, Hope for Escape. That's Well, Hope for Escape is more Exodia, but Accumulated Fortune in particular is part of what makes Chain Burn Chain Burn. It's yes. just not there. Yes, he, he does play two copies of Chain Strike, uh, which is where the deck gets its name. Um... He has got Balance of Judgment, though, which is an interesting card that takes a look at the number of cards that you have total in your hand and on the field and compares it to your opponent's field. If your opponent has more, you draw cards equal to the difference. So perhaps he's thinking that that's going to be a little bit more of a reliable card-drawing outlet than Accumulated Fortune that perhaps you just can't get to Chainlink 4. It could be, and here he is in the top eight of the uh, Dragon Duel World Championship. Mm -hmm. He gets in there at seven points. There are only four rounds, Swiss in the Dragon Duel World Championship, so he's in with a record of 2-1-1. Two, one, one. two wins, a draw, and a loss. His opponent, Connor Dwyer, is in also on seven points with two wins, a draw, and a loss. All right, now they're dueling against each other in this final Dragon Duel round of the day mm -hmm. to see who will advance to the top four tomorrow. In other Dragon Duel news, the rest of the top eight, we have matches between Charlie Futch, who we saw in our previous Dragon Duel matchup, and he's going to be taking on Ufa Noe. Rafael Mariano Reich, Reich is taking on Felix Rao. David Alexander Villator Villatoro is taking on Eric Topel. And those are your Dragon Duel Top 8 matches. Now then, I wonder if these two have played earlier in the tournament. That's a good question. I don't know. Because there's uh, so few duelists in the tournament, it is a possibility. Mm -hmm. It does happen frequently, actually, in the World Championships, where one duelist plays another duelist in Swiss and then plays them again in the top cut. Yeah, this is a... Uh, knowing what you're playing against in this case, like if you know ahead of time that you're playing against a burn deck, that's a pretty big advantage coming into this particular matchup. It is. It's interesting. I noticed in Dwyer's deck, I think he's using uh, Cosmic Cyclone. Yes, he is. So uh, that 1,000 life point cost could be steep, but at the same time, he might hit a card that actually deals more damage or draws cards that would deal more damage. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he plays that card in this particular matchup. Hmm. Uh, I would imagine he hasn't prepared much to duel against Chain Burn. Uh, no, that's the whole point of playing a deck like this. If you yeah. show up to the World Championship with Exodia or with Burn or with a deck out deck, something like that, that's just not within the realm of possibility. Basically, people just don't think you're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and as a result, they don't prepare for it people, at all. People joke about it. Mm -hmm. They yeah, joke about the using it. And I'm going to go with Chamber, and I'm going to go with Exodia. It's the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play Burn. I'm going to play Burn. And eventually, they stop believing that somebody will actually <laughs> play Burn. And then you've got Ryan Yu who says, no, really, I, I'm playing Burn. And now he's in the top eight. Yeah. So good for him. He's actually been um, fairly innovative. Back at the WCQ, he played Pendulum Magicians using the Pendulum Evolution cards and took that to a first place finish. Yeah, that was a powerful deck that a lot of duelists actually weren't, wasn't, uh, a lot of duelists weren't using, so. And so one of those things, like, well, nobody's going to play Pendulums. Yeah. Nobody's going to play Pendulums. <laughs> and then he did it, and he managed to defeat Charlie Futch in a pretty exciting duel. That was actually one of my favorites. If you can go find the video on demand of the Dragon Duel final, that was my, probably my favorite match of the weekend at the North American WCQ. Definitely give it a watch. All right. Andrew Bowling says it's time to duel. And I agree. I 
if you're you, do you choose to go first? Yep. Is that a monster? Ooh. Ooh, I hope it's Dice Jar. Yeah, it could very well be. What's it got? It got Backjack. Backjack, Magician of Faith, Dice Jar. Those were all valid sets. Probably didn't set the Maxi in his deck. Nope. He uh, hits Demise for two, and then, ooh, discards Lazy on the Time Lord. You know, I was just saying a round ago, we're probably not going to see Lazy on the Time Lord, but there it is. So, yeah, given that he gave up the guaranteed burn damage from Lazion in favor of setting that monster, uh, that would tell me that it's something pretty darn good. It's probably not Backjack, because you want that in the graveyard. Hmm. Attributes Disciple of the Tree of Draco Phoenix, Summon Ignis Heat. Dimension Wall is gone. That's old school. That is old school. It's a good hit here, too, because it's a non chainable trap card, which there aren't that many of in used deck. It's a Magician of Faith. He wants the card Ooh, of Demise back. card of Demise back. I like it. I like it. That's interesting. Ignis Heat's effect will activate. Uh, mm, will it, activate. it won't, because it's it in the damage step. It will not activate. It looked like he was going to activate it, but you're right. Because in the damage step, he can't. All right, so Dwyer's got, looks like a Solemn Strike in his hand. Cosmic Cyclone. Is that Cyclone? Cyclone, of course, best used on a freshly set card so that your opponent can't just start a big chain against it. He'll set it down. You draws for the turn. And I believe he had a Reckless Greed set. It looks like he's trying to work out a little bit of math. What are my chances of getting another Reckless? Should I play Card of Demise first? Plays Card of Demise first. Chain Link 2 is... Is Dynamite Knight, or Ignis Heat, sorry. Chain Link Chain Strike. Chain is Chain Strike. Connor Dwyer says, hand it over. Looks like we got our flags reversed. Connor, Dwi Connor uh, Dwyer is from Australia. Ryan Yu. This is a good Canada. play for you because you get some damage in before Card of Demise stops him from dealing damage. Oh, oh wow, got both second chain, chain strike. All right, so that might be confusing for some of you because if you're looking up Chain Strike right now, it says this card can't be activated if cards of the same name are in the same chain. That doesn't mean if there is another Chain Strike in the chain. It means if there are two or more cards or effects in that Chain Link whose origin was a card with the same name. Right, so when so the second Chain Strike is activated, the only cards in the chain are the other Chain Strike yeah. and the card of Demise. There's only one Chain Strike, there's not two, so you can right. add the second one on. But you couldn't add a third one because now there's two Chain Strikes. Okay. So that's 1,200 damage plus 800 damage. Uh, and then the Ignis Heat's effect will resolve, allowing Dwyer to get a, a spell from his deck. And then Card of Demise will resolve allowing you to draw until he has three cards in his hand, and then Dwyer will be safe for the rest of this turn. And that's important to note that Card of Demise, after it resolves, no more damage of any kind, not just battle. So Ryan Yu playing very carefully and making sure to get his damage in now when he has the chance. Importantly for you, he freed up some of his uh, Smell and Crap card zones to use those cards that he just drew because he doesn't want to lose them in the end phase and because of how few monsters he's playing I don't think he will be losing those cards in the end phase. No, it doesn't seem likely. He's got a total of six. Six monsters six in the deck. Monsters. And we've already seen Magician of Faith. And Lazy on. Yeah, so got this card four left. Time. All right, let's see what he's got. I have a feeling it'll be a couple face down cards. One, two, yep. three, and that's it. Manages to set everything. That's about as good as it gets with good old card of demise. If you're Dwyer, do you pay the thousand to get rid of one of them in the mm. end phase, the newly set cards? That's difficult. Yeah. I like that he didn't. I think he understands the resources here, and he's going to pick up a, a penalty here for a card being revealed inadvertently. Just a warning, though. Warning plus uh, both players get to see the card, and then it's returned to its original position. And they continue quite quickly. Yeah, I believe we're still in the end phase. 
Yeah, we're probably in the end phase. Goes Waterfall of Dragon Souls. Go search for a worm type monster. Gets Dynamite Knight. It also has a secondary ability that lets you send worm type monsters in your hand to the graveyard to draw that number of cards. So any number of worms, draw that many cards. Plus one. Oh, it is plus one, is it not? Yep, so yes. it also replaces itself. That's right. Notably, though, you cannot choose zero. You can't actually no. just not do. Otherwise, it would be a card effect. better jar of greed. Jar of greed with some extra effects. All right, so Dwyer's got his Dynamite Knight, and he's got his deck shuffled. Now Ryan Yu's going to give it a pretty good shuffle. We now are in the top eight. These are the playoff rounds, even though they're still technically on day one. So there are advanced protections in place. All right, there we go. Looks like Dwyer may still be considering using the Cosmic Cyclone. Yeah, I guess this is all still in the end phase, huh? Has to consider, like, life points are a very real thing in this yeah. deck, in this matchup. He's not trying to defeat you like a conventional deck. Right. Oh, okay, I guess no. it's not in the, yeah, end, not phase. In the end phase. It's all on his own turn. That's right, because he, he drew and kind of knocked the card down, which is what drew the penalty. Oh. Clears an attack with... Ignis Heat. This is dangerous. I'll see if he hits a mirror wall. Oh, he hits Blaze and Ooh. Mirror Force. I like Blaze and Mirror Force. That's going to damage both players. Ignis Heat activates its effect as Chain Link 2. Let's see what else he's got. He's got Secret Barrel. That's going to be 200. 1, 2, 3, plus the cards in the hand, which you can't see the number of. Looks like another few. Plus just desserts. That's 500 more. Let's see curious to see where this is going, because the Secret Barrel would do more damage after Dwyer gets a card. It would. And the way it's chained to Ignis Heat's effect, the Secret Barrel will resolve before Dwyer gets that extra card. Well, the Just Desserts has to be here, because Blazing Mirror Force is going to take out Ignis Heat. It'll be a wash with Secret Barrel, because Ignis Heat's going to be gone. Well, that's true. You're right. So it doesn't really make a difference. It changed Cosmic Cyclone. Dwyer takes a thousand, thousand when his life points are already pretty low. It oh, and it's, greed. A, it's a chainable trap card, Reckless Greed. Does Dwyer know that all of his cards stay on the field until the chain is over? Uh, he might not, which is why... Oh, he he's got the Ojama oh. Trio. That's 1,500 <laughs> more. <laughs> all right, oh. so that, that makes sense. That adds an extra 600 to the Secret Barrel, since it's going to resolve before Secret Barrel. An extra 1,500 from Just Desserts. Yeah, I think Dwyer's gone. Uh, I believe this should be enough damage. Yeah, I haven't done the math, but it looks like it. It's 2,000 plus 12 plus however much is in the hand plus Blazing Mirror Force for 1,200. Yeah, I think he's out. I think Cosmic Cyclone might have put him under. All right, so we're resolving the chain. Ojama Trio first. We got draw two. Then we got 2,000 damage. Then we got... Oh, 200 for each card on the field, and in, on his field, and in his hand. So that's 1,200 just for the stuff on the field, and he's got a big grip of cards right there. Which is... Oh, how many does he have in hand? More than enough. Yeah, more than enough. <laughs> I don't even think we get to the Blazing Mirror Force in this yep. case before Secret Barrel takes him out. Actually, how does Blazing Mirror Force work? Because I know you can't use it to win the duel. Right. Can you activate it? And then chain a bunch of stuff, yes. And, the then, and then can it still resolve to win the duel? Yep. Just the activation requirement is it cannot yes. cause you to win the duel when you activate it. Pretty much. It's like Ring of Destruction, where yes. the combined okay. total has to be less than their life points. Or is that a... Uh, actually, let's look up Blazing Mirror Force. It might just be that it does damage to you first. We might be getting it uh, uh, confused with Ring of Destruction. Oh, uh, you might be right. Let me. Let's see. Destroys many attack position monsters your opponent controls. 
uh, as possible. As many attack position monsters your opponent controls as possible, and if you do take damage equal to half the combined original attack of those destroyed monsters, then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the damage you took. Okay, You're so right. Yeah, you, you take can it win first, it. but you can actually yeah. win with it. That's really powerful, again. especially in this chain burn deck. It's really, really good. And it's so strange that we keep calling it chain burn just without the accumulated fortune. Like, that was yeah. a huge chain. That's true. It's just so weird to me to see it without some of the defining cards of that strategy. But, you know, he got both chain strikes in there, so... He did. <laughs> the namesake is fulfilled. He did, uh... What was it? 2,000 damage with those? 12 and 8, was it? Mm. Or was it... Yeah. It's uh, 300 times the chain number. I think it's 4. I thought it was 4. I think it's 300. So was it uh, 9 and 6? Was it chain like 2, 3, or 3 and 4? I thought it was chain links 3 and 4. Mm. It is 400 per oh, chain four link. Eight. Okay. Yeah. So 8 and 12. Yeah, so, pretty good. so he took a quarter of the life points just with the chain strike. Pretty good. And now that I'm running the numbers again in my head, I don't know that the Cosmic Cyclone made much of a difference because he was still taking one more 12 off of Blazing Mirror Force. It yeah. just made it not even get to that. Yeah. It, yeah, since he lost before the Blazing Mirror Force resolved, it certainly... The 1,000 wasn't significant. And this is a deck that you can actually really practice at, especially with the math aspect of it. But you can see, Ryan, you knew the calculations immediately. As soon as that chain started, he knew he had won the game. It's just a matter of making sure that he sequences the cards correctly, gets them onto the chain in the correct order to get the result you want. So, like, when you activate Just Desserts, when your opponent only has one monster on the field, it seems a little strange. But he knows, well, I've got a Jama Trio, and that's going to be later on after I see everything that my opponent's got. But you can do the math for this sort of thing. Okay, if my opponent has one monster, and I give him, okay, I give him three more, but that also adds into Secret Barrel, and that's the kind yeah. of stuff that you have to think about before you show up at the tournament with a deck like Burn. And I think, uh, I think part of why it has that Boy That Cried Wolf thing is that a lot of people start to sit down and do the calculations for it, and then decide, I don't really want to do the math. <laughs> it's possible. There's a lot to think about, because you need to figure out in advance how the chain is going to resolve. And every card and the sequencing of every card you activate is consequential, especially because the deck usually comes very close to dealing 8,000 damage. It doesn't mm -hmm. usually blow away the opponent. So every 400 damage here that you can eke in with Chain Strike by building the chain correctly, or 500 with an extra monster from Just Desserts, has a big impact. It might be the difference between getting your opponent down to zero and leaving your opponent with 500 life points at the end of the duel. And from a mental perspective, it's a lot harder to work out the math on that than it is with monsters. So monsters have an attack value just printed on it. You put the monsters there, if I have this combination of monsters, how many turns is it going to take me to win? Like Battleful Artemis, for example, is the one I always use. I have to hit you five times with Battleful Artemis to beat you. That's 8,000 exactly. But it's a lot easier to do that because you've got the number right there on the card, and it's always the same. It doesn't yeah. matter how many cards your opponent has in their hand or on the field, whereas with Secret Barrel and Chain Strike, those numbers are fluid. They modify a lot depending on what's happening in the duel. Exactly. Dwyer chooses to go first. He uses Pod Duality and reveals Pod Desires, Ash Blossom, and True King's Return from the top of his deck. Looks like you had a Ash backwards card in there, too. Ash Blossom seems really good in this matchup. Yeah, there's a lot of drawing spells. But he opts for the Desires. He could already have one. He very well might. And Ryan, he's going to take a look at it to see which of his stuff this can negate. Just to make sure if it says, you know, some things say, uh, you know, add a card from deck to your hand except by drawing, but this is not the case. This will also negate drawing effects. Yes. Because, of the, because it hits Card of Demise, hits Pot of Duality, hits Pot of Desires, um, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, especially when uh, Ryan needs effects like this or... Uh, reckless Greed and that sort of thing. Because you can't really You're right, play. Reckless Greed also. Uh, it's, it's especially interesting because I in this particular matchup, it's kind of odd because if you can land a monster on the field and keep dealing damage with it, mm -hmm. the monster never goes away. Right. Every trap card that deals damage, it goes to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. So if you can trade your Ash Blossom for just a single card, even just a pot of duality in the worst case scenario, mm. that's putting you a little bit ahead because you're landing a threat on the field in the form of a monster and slowly whittling away at their number of cards in comparison to yours. I think that's why we see things like Blazing Mirror Force and Ring of Destruction in this deck, is that you need cards that can both inflict damage yes. and get rid of monsters. Whereas, say, Magic Cylinder does a lot of damage but doesn't get rid of anything. Yeah, that's true. Um, it could be problematic against a card like Masterpiece that can gain immunity to mm. those cards. 
Let's take a look at Dimension Wall real fast while we're at it. I do wonder if a Masterpiece would be uh, immune to Dimension Wall. If I remember correctly, it only hits the player, right? Yeah, it, it changes the, the opponent system. takes the damage that you would have taken. Yeah, I think it's like uh, Wabaku. Hmm. So uh, I don't think it would be immune. So Pot of Desires into the True Draco Apocalypse for Ignis Heat. Yeah, so it's just uh, this doesn't deal with monsters at all. Your yeah. opponent takes the battle damage you would have taken from this battle. Yeah, since it only touches the player, Masterpiece cannot stop it. It could destroy it with its effect. True. Before it's activated, of course. Indeed. All right, so Pot of Desires is activated. Hopefully for Dwyer, he picked up two cards that are better than the one Ash Blossom he chose not to take. So it's one and two, and that's it. That's part of the reason that Burn is so nasty in this particular matchup is that uh, True Draco decks hoard a lot of cards in hand. They really do, especially since all of the little True Draco monsters just keep getting them. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't want them, they usually pick them up. They're free cards. They're free cards for you, Michael. <laughs> free cards. These are your cards. I can't hold them all day. <laughs> in the end phase, Cost of Cyclone picks off one of the five cards that Ryan used up. This is probably the time to activate it. It's uh, Wabaku. Interesting. He and made next one copy. And obviously, Ryan, you cannot activate any of these cards since they had just been set. And he thinks long and hard before. Oh, he can't do that. You can't normal summon a Time Lord with out tributing unless you have no monsters on the field. And he had to go with, which Time Lord was that? That, that must be have been Zaphion. Zaphion. And he had, well, that's incredible if he were able to summon it. Be pretty good. That shuffles all of his opponents spelling crap cards back into the deck. Yep. Well, because he has Ignis, he was unable to play it. Mm. Yeah. It looks like he's attacking, and it looks like you might be taking the damage. Yeah, you just takes the attack. He doesn't have a Dimension Wall or a Blazing Mirror Force or anything to stop the attack or prevent the damage. He's got plenty of life points left. He does, but it goes fast against a solid threat. So he sets the card face down. And now we've got a question on... Oh, yes, we don't. Okay. Oh. Dwyer picks up another card. Still standing strong behind his Ignis Heat. 7,000 life points left. It's a little difficult to get 7,000 on there without a pretty darn good combination. Yeah. He didn't have it last turn. Although the card he just picked up might break it open. Yeah, uh, Jama Trio is a card you want to see a lot in this yeah, deck. Yeah, because that adds damage to a lot of cards. It's kind of like Trick Stars. It is. It's where, very much like Trickstar. Where they have a lot of cards that modify the damage dealt by other cards, and it really racks up. Ignis Heat hits again. 4,800 damage total dealt. And then we've got a Secret Barrel. Is Dwyer going to use the effect of his Ignis Heat? It looks like he's not. He's not, and it looks like Secret Barrel's just going to resolve. Hmm. All right, well, he gets in some damage there. That's 800 plus whatever's in the hand. Oh, no, he is using the effect. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, it looked like he wasn't, but he is. So that's an extra 200 points of damage, since the effect will resolve first. Yeah, I guess it was unclear. One, two, three, four... Oh, no, that's his deck. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his bio's shuffling his deck. Thought he was counting out his hand. But oh. it looks like the uh, the verdict was seven. Yeah, so he must have three cards in hand, including the card he searched for, since he just lost 1,400 life points. 5,600 is a pretty manageable number, though. It is. Yeah, as long as uh, none of his attacks backfire. I feel like that's where, a big, that's where some big swings happen. Mm-hmm. Stuff like Blazing Mirror Force, Dimension Wall. Goes to main phase. 
Magic Cylinder is not in the deck. Flips Reckless Greed. Is Magic, Magic Cylinder is legal for this tournament, right? It is. Interesting he chose uh, Dimension Wall over Magic Cylinder, perhaps because Magic Cylinder would be stopped by Masterpiece. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it is. It both targets the monster and negates the attack, and that most definitely affects the monster. Ryan Yu picks up two cards off of his Reckless Greed. Puts a little reminder there. Cannot draw during his draw phase for his normal draw. Two turns. Doesn't look to be going too well for you. You need some good cards here. I think we're at a point where he could actually just steal this one, though. It's possible. He his how big is his hand? He has two cards in it now. Uh, should be three. Three now? So he drew and then flipped Reckless Greed. So we go oh, from this, zero. this is on his yeah. own turn. So we go from zero to three. Okay. A lot of times, unless you have the multiple Reckless Greeds already down, activating a single copy is a sign uh, that you're kind of desperate and willing to take the two cards now and skip your next two draw phases because you don't think you'll survive two turns naturally. And that's sort of what I'm seeing in you right here. Yeah, but if he sets one, well, what else could he have in there? Do you think he might have sided something in that's not working out for him? Yep, he set two cards. We have got a result from round five. At table ten, Joshua Schmidt has won. And now you're still thinking. All right, Ignis Heats attacks again. That's going to get him pretty low. It appears that Joshua Schmidt is going to finish with a 2 and 3 record. You drops down to 800 life points. Unless he has a reckless greed face down, he probably loses. Because he's skipping his next two draw phases. And if he couldn't do anything before, he likely can't do anything now. Alright, he, he has a second reckless greed. What if he got the third one, too? That'd be pretty crazy. That would be incredible. If he had both. That would get him right back in. No, nope, it's only the one, though. Yeah. Even that's not bad. Drawing four cards, skipping two draw phases. Oh yeah, it's a lot better than drawing zero cards on this turn. Yeah. That is for certain. Pod Desires, Ash Blossom stops Pod Desires. So it seems very likely that he skipped on the Ash Blossom earlier because he already had it in hand. That could be. That very likely could be. You can only activate one Ash Blossom per turn, so he might have been thinking he didn't need it. Oh, uh -oh. you sets a card. Sets a monster. It could be Dice Jar. And he's under 6,000. <laughs> I don't know. Anything can happen. Dangerous for you, though, if, you activate, if it is a Dice Jar and he activates its effect, if Dwyer gets a higher roll, he just wins. Well, you, when you've got 800 life points anyways, what have you got to lose? That's true. Especially when you're skipping your next draw phase. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he's he tributes, tributes some of his dynamite by tributing True King's return, so that destroys the face down monster. Oh, it's absolute oh, it's king. Absolute king Jack. Back. Absolute king back, back, back Jack. Jack. He's back, Jack. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's look at our top three cards and see if there's any traps. Then Just Desserts is now activated. He could have an Ojama Trio to increase the 1,000 damage that would be dealt by ju to Just Desserts to 2,500. It's possible. Let's see if he's going to get hit by the same combo. It would explain why he's flipping the Just Desserts. No, just the 1,000 damage it looks like. Hmm. Blazing Mirror Force will no longer help him since he'll take the damage first. And you do need to actually take the damage in order to deal any back. Dwyer uses the effect of uh, his True Draco to uh, play True King's Return from his deck. Looks like Jack Back is now going to resolve. He gets to rearrange the top three cards of his deck. Mm -hmm. And then he can, during, either during his opponent's turn, banish Back Jack to excavate the top card, and if it's a trap, he can put it on the field and play it immediately. Yeah. Jackback is a cool card. I haven't really seen it played since the uh, Burning Abyss era. I like the Burning Abyss version with uh, Fiend Griefing and all that good stuff. Yeah, that was that was a pretty cool deck. I like that one a lot. 
back Jack, of course, is a uh, tiny Jack Atlas with a jetpack. Yeah, I like that. He's back. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of fun cards from 5Ds. There are. A, Dwyer is uh, changing his monster to defense mode. And we excavate for a threatening roar. Oh, pretty good. Revealed. And he can put it on the field. Looks like Dwyer might gain the effect of one of... Uh, well, actually, no. He Did he use those already? No, I don't think he used Ignis no, yet. I don't think so he did. if he wants to, he can chain its effect to get a spell, and he's doing that. Meanwhile, in Dragon Duel, a Dragon Duelist, Eric Topel has won his match at Table 1. And that means that David Toro has been eliminated. David Toro of Guatemala. This is definitely going to be tough for you to win. Mm. Yeah, I feel like he's gradually falling behind. He takes another thousand with just desserts. Yeah. And again, this is the problem he's facing. His threats don't stay on the field. So. It, oh, I see. He's getting rid of all the cards and then doing a huge balance of That's judgment. That's what he was doing. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Doesn't one, matter two, if you're three, four, five, six on the field versus one, two, I think three total. So he's going to get three more cards. Yeah, it doesn't matter if your cards don't stay on the field. If you just want them in the graveyard to draw more cards with balance of judgment. And the great part about this is that he knew what the cards were because he shifted them around with backjack. Yeah. That's a lot of good information to get. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That actually might put him right back in the duel. A dark, dark hole. hole! Dark hole off the top. We've got <laughs> shades of the North American World Championship qualifier. Where we're getting top deck dark holes left and right. Uh, that's actually surprising to see. It doesn't deal any damage. And uh, Yu is actually not main decking it. He just has two card copies in his side deck well, it's just that he of decided uh, to add in. Yeah, it's just because it's good against Draco. They have so few monsters that if you start getting them off the field, you've got a shout. You have a chance. As good as that dark hole was, Yu is still in a pretty desperate position. Well, you know, I think Dwyer has 2,000 points worth of secret barrel damage, does he not? One, two, three, four, five on the field, one, two, three. Oh, no. Only three in hand? I can't quite tell how many cards he has in hand. Does he have a secret barrel? I know he used one already. Wow, card of demise. If he doesn't have it yet, he may after this. He may. Wow, this is, this is actually going very well for him. It's suddenly to a completely new duel, thanks to Balance of Judgment and Card of Demise in the same turn. Sets one, sets another. Does he have a Time Lord? No, no. but he discards a Jama Trio. He would only do that, I think, if he has game here. He did draw six cards last turn, so it is possible. He's just waiting for Dwyer to do something. So if he picked up Chain Strikes, for example, that would be a reason to do it. Oh, no, it's Zapheon. We, we knew he now had we played, it. Now we knew he had it. <laughs> we knew yeah. he had it, but now he can play it. So now uh, it's do or die for you here. He's either going to win or just lose all his cards. But the interesting thing with that is that it starts the chain. Ah, uh, is it, yeah, so it looks like he'll gain... I mean, Zapheon's a normal summon, right? Yes. So he'll get, use an additional normal summon to then summon the uh, dynamite. Interesting. Okay. So we've got... Uh, I don't think we have a chain link here yet. Not yet. Oh, Threatening, threatening roar, roar. So that's right. going to keep the Zephion away for a turn. And we knew about that from Backjack. We did. That's pretty good here. So now Zephion will not be able to shuffle the Smell and Crap cards back nope. in, right? But Zephion will go back to the deck. Yes. So he, he effectively got rid of Zephion, even though it's immune to destruction effects. And he also prevented the draw card effect, since it's not sent to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. All right. Sets two more end phase. It's Ojama Trio. Wow, this is big. What yeah. if he has the third Just Desserts? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking that. But even th now, he's definitely got 2,000 points worth of secret barrel damage. Ten minutes to go on the round. Life points at a premium, especially if this could possibly go to overtime. 
Wow, another oh, balance of judgments. He's got ten cards. To, does uh, you have a card in his hand? Uh, I don't know if it even matters because he's still going to get six cards. If he does, he has to be able to win now. Wait, how many? Did, did he just draw eight? He's got one, two. He had nothing in hand because of card of demise, and his opponent had ten cards on the field, yeah. so he should draw seven because balance of judgment counts. Well, if he had no hand, he had one face down in the balance of judgment, right? Isn't it 10 compared to 2? Uh, no, he had uh, two face down and balance of judgment. So that's three. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought, uh, yeah, you're correct. Goes duality. I didn't see one. that other card. He gets Blazing Mirror, Force Card, Demise, and Secret Blast. Takes Secret Blast. That does 300 damage for everything on the table. On Dwyer's side, which would be, oh, I don't know, 3,000. Wow. This is a fantastic comeback for you. He can't believe it himself. After you know, going reckless greed and actually escaping his own deck lockdown from yeah. reckless greed, going into judgment, into judgment, into demise, it's just been an incredible string of cards coming from Ryan Yu. And the Dark Hole really did help him because he's still here. It did. It, it kept him in the duel long, long enough to make this amazing comeback. There's the Secret Blast. Secret Blast, that should do 300 for each. That's 3,000. The Any only other card wins it. The only way it could be stronger is if he had a card in the extra monster zone. That's true. Still wouldn't be quite enough. And maybe it's only 33. Field spell zone. Oh, there we go. And there's Chain Strike. That should do it. Yep, that's an extra 800. He's got it. Ryan Yu, he can't Amazing. believe it. I can't believe it. But Ryan Yu has won 2 nothing, and he's going to day two. Yeah, I'm um, disappointed we didn't see Dice Jar, but we did see an incredible string of plays that allowed Ryan Yu to take the win and advance to the top oh four. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's the whole thing. That's that surprise factor. And yeah. one of the great things is we saw all that card drawing power. Yeah, he, he me uh, executed those plays masterfully. So if we were questioning swapping Accumulated Fortune with Balance of Judgment 4, we certainly aren't now. I, no. think, I think he's proven... <laughs> Uh, quite convincingly that Balance of Judgment is a very good card. Definitely. And that he is absolutely right to be playing it. Resolving two for drawing over a quarter of his decks. It's not what I expected to see when I woke up this morning. I Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely didn't expect that. But he has certainly done a great job. So let's take a look at the bracket here and see if we know who his opponent will be yet. I don't know that we have. Oh, and we, well, we just did receive a result, though, from the main event. It looks like Shunsuke Hiyama has won his match over on table three, which I believe puts him at four and one for the tournament, and he will be making the top eight once again. And it looks like uh, Maxime has also been victorious on table 11 in the main event. Uh, good for him. And uh, let's see. Well, bracket. So we know that Eric Tapel has won already. He's eliminated Villatoro. Ryan Yu has won, defeating Connor Dreyer. And that is all we know so far from the Dragon Duel Top 8. So uh, we don't know what either of the two matches that we're going to see tomorrow are quite yet. But we will try to get you that information as soon as we can, if we can. But really... What else could Dwyer do there? Like, everything uh, seemed to be going his way, yeah. and then it just all went wrong. I think the only thing he maybe could have done is taken the second Ash Blossom with the pod duality mm. early on, just because the card is so powerful in this matchup. Right, like, he, he could if he had two, he could have negated the Desires, but then in a later turn negated, negated the card of Demise. Or card of Demise, yeah. or something like uh, that. Because that, that ended up being his undoing. Mm. It was the draw cards. Yep. You wouldn't even have gotten to a situation where you're going balance of judgment for no. seven if the first reckless greed had stopped or exactly. if that part of demise had stopped, etc. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that that works for me. But other than that, it's you know, the, this Ooh. chain burn or burn decks in general are pretty restrictive of what you can actually do against them mm -hmm. uh, because they aim to play so differently than most of the cards in the metagame uh, that a lot of your opponent's cards don't interact well with what you're using. Right. And uh, it's stuff like direct attackers. For example. If you take the Trickstar, for example, some of their burn doesn't even come from spells and traps. It comes from monsters. Yeah. 
or just attacking directly, that sort of thing. This is a totally different beast than that. It's not even going to try to interact with you on the same level that a regular standard deck that plays monsters would. Its monsters are there just as a means to an end, and the end is making your life points go to zero, not necessarily affecting the number of cards on the field. In the olden days, you used to see Morphing Jar. Absolutely. I love Morphing the Jar. <laughs> reset the hands. I can't tell you how many, how many uh, Tournament Pack 2s I had to win to get my Morphing Jar back in the day. I'll never forget. I'm, I'm, I don't know how many years ago it was, but I must have been very young. I pulled a Morphing Jar in my second Tournament Pack that I opened. Ultra rare. I might hate you a little right now, <laughs> but we could talk about that off air. Yeah. But that's why that's why I never forget it, because it was so unlikely, and I wanted the card so badly to include in my deck. Oh, I've played it ever since until it got, was forbidden. Oh, I'm getting a little grumpy now. <laughs> Anyways, we have next up for you is Duel Links. This is going to be the final round today of Duel Links, I believe. Uh, yes, I believe so, yes. All right. And I am very excited for it. And that we are planning to start in about 10 minutes, so don't go away. 